Thanks for coming. I'm Hao Nan. Uh, this is the work I've done with people at Baidu. So our problem is to generate a paragraph for a video. We are more interested in generating multiple sentences instead of uh, just sing, uh, one single short sentence because we believe that multiple sentences are able to capture the rich semantics of the video. So for example, in this video, we have uh, several fine-grained activities going on. And each sentence in this paragraph describes one of the activities. So instead of saying uh, the person sharpened the knife in the kitchen, we can say with more details, the person entered the, uh, entered the kitchen, the person opened the drawer, took out the knife and the sharpener, sharpened the knife, cleaned the knife, and so on. So um, we know that sentences are not independent. There is semantics context. If I have generated a sentence, the person took out some potatoes, the next sentence would be more, like, more likely to be uh, the person peeled the potatoes instead of the person turned on the stove. So we want to model this dependency. And we know that a, uh, a paragraph is inherently hierarchical. A sentence consists of multiple words, and the paragraph consists of multiple sentences. So we can use an RN to model the sentence so that, given the current word, it predicts the next word. And on top of this, we can use another RN to predict, uh, to model the whole paragraph so that given the semantic representation of the current sentence, it predicts the next sentence. Um, by incorporating this hierarchical structure into our generation method, we have a framework that contains two components. The first component is a sentence generator, and the second component is a paragraph generator. The sentence generator includes a language model uh, that predicts the next word given the current word without any other evidence. And in parallel to this, we also have a, an attention model whose input is uh, the video feature pool, which is basically the sequence of features that are extracted from video frames. So the attention model uses the feature pool and the state of the recurrent layer to decide uh, an attention vector, which is then used as the weights for the features in the pool. And the attention model computes a weighted average feature uh, from the feature pool. And the weighted average feature is input to the match model layer together with the state of the recurrent layer. And now the, the recurrent state and the average feature decide the next predict, predicted word uh, together. So after one complete sentence is generated, the paragraph generator takes the last instance of the recurrent state sequence, and also it computes an average embedding of the words in the sentence. It combines the average embedding and the last instance into the uh, sentence embedding, which is then input to the recurrent layer two. The recurrent layer two basically summarizes all the sentences it has seen so far in the paragraph and outputs the paragraph state. This paragraph state is then used as the initial state for the sentence generator for generating the next sentence. So now let's look into the details of the framework. Um, although I only draw one video feature pool here, it actually consists of two features, the appearance feature and the action feature. So both of the feature pools go through the same attention process, except that they have uh, different sets of parameters. And eventually we will have two weighted average features and both of them are input to the multi model layer. So for the object appearance, we use VGG16, and for action, we use either C3D or dense trajectories plus facial vector. And uh, our attention model there's spatial and temporal attention simultaneously. Suppose we have uh, several friends. We first use optical flow to roughly detect the person in the, in the video, uh, which is denoted by the blue bounding boxes here. And after that, we crop several small regions around the lower half of the uh, person box. And then we extract appearance feature for each, uh, the, for each of the small region. So basically, each small region is a candidate for the interesting object we are looking for. And, and we end up with a feature pool. And also, we have uh, the previous recurrent state from the recurrent layer. So now we can um, compute the, the attention weights by 
uh, combining the feature pool and the recovery state. And after that, we do a dot product between the feature pool and the attention weights to get the average feature. And the average feature is then input to the match model layer. So this slide shows our paragraph generator around. Basically, the output of the paragraph generator is input to the sentence generator for the initial state for generating the next sentence. And here we compute the sentence embedding vectors and, and, and visualize several examples on our trained models. Um, so we can see that for the first two sentences, they basically have uh, a very similar, uh, they have very similar embedding vectors um, because they both involve an activity in which the person removes something from the drawer. And also for the, uh, for the next two sentences, their embedding vectors are also very similar. And again, they involve uh, some activity in which the person uh, pours something into the container. So on the right, there is a matrix um, of the Euclidean distances between every two sentences out of the four. So this tells us that um, basically we can learn meaningful sentence embeddings from the training. So for the experiment, we have two datasets. The first one is uh, YouTube to text. It's open domain. It contains a variety of scenarios downloaded from YouTube. We only use this dataset as a special case for our problem because only one sentence is annotated for each video. So what we are more interested in is the second dataset, the type of smart level. It's closed domain and it only contains uh, cooking scenarios. And we can generate several dependent sentences uh, for a video on this dataset. So for evaluation, we have uh, three metrics, the blue score, the meteor score, and, and the cider score. So basically, after we generate a sentence, we compare the sentence to a collection of annotated sentences. And the higher the scores are, uh, the closer that generated sentence is to the allocated ones. And here is the result on the YouTube to text dataset. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, we can see that our method outperforms all the comparison methods and the two baselines. And this is the result on the Taco Smart Level dataset. Again, our method outperforms all the comparison methods and the four baselines. The, the first baseline is called HRMVGG. It means that we only use VGG feature, but not the DT feature. And the second baseline is HRNDT. It means that we only use DT feature, but not the VGG feature. So these two baselines tell us um, the both of the features are crucial for our task, and we can't leave out either of them for the for the method. So we notice that uh, the last two baselines have performance that is quite close to ours. We know that. Uh, evaluation metric scores are not always reliable, so we need further comparison. But go, uh, we first uh, compare our method with RNCAT. RNCAT uh, has a flat structure. It basically concatenates all the sentences directly with one RN. So the last instance, uh, the, the last state of the previous sentence is used as the initial state for the next sentence. We conducted a, a human judgment experiment on Amazon Mechanic Turk. We, we show a video on, on the web page, and uh, by the side, we also show the two sentences generated from the two methods, either uh, from our method or our cat. And then we ask the Turker to answer the following question. Which of the two sentences better describe the video? The first one, the second one, or they are equally good or bad? So in the end, we have about 770 selections for our method, but only 470 selections for our NCAT. And now we compare our method with uh, RNCENT. RNCENT means that we just remove the, prog uh, the paragraph generator from our framework, and also it doesn't do any concatenation either. Basically, each sentence is generated independently, and there is no semantics context. So in the second example, we can see that RNCENT is unaware of the generation of the previous sentence because it generates taking out the cutting board from the drawer twice. And in contrast, our method does not generate duplicate phrases or sentences. So finally, some conclusions and discussions. 
We have shown that hierarchical RN improves paragraph generation, but there are still some issues. The first issue is that we notice that most errors occur when we are generating nouns. So it's still difficult for us to recognize small objects in the video, especially on the type of smart level dataset. And the second issue is that um, currently there is only one way information flow in our hierarchical structure. So if the first sentence is generated incorrectly, the wrong information would be propagated to later sentences, and which is a bad thing. And the last issue is that we believe that language model helps, but sometimes it overrides computer vision result in a wrong way. So um, we think solving these three problems would definitely help the paragraph generation in the future. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Please come to our poster number four.